A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on this uh, instrument cluster new display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Uh, this is basically an instrument cluster for those models that don't have a traditional looking cluster when you look at it right in front of your face. That video has gained over 65,000 views in the last couple of weeks and I'm extremely grateful for all the support. Thank you for everyone who subscribed to my channel because of that video. Uh, thank you for everyone who has been supporting my channel. I really appreciate that. In today's video, I am going to be driving around with this display and I'll show you all what this display is all about. I'm gonna answer top questions such as the height, airflow, warranty. Uh, my comment section has been divided into multiple main themes about questions that I have received. So I'll be answering all of those questions today. I'm gonna to show you how software update works. I'm gonna do a software update with you to show you that you know, what updated after the last, uh, you know, software update for this display, as well as talk about how does it handle Tesla software update? Did anything change? Thanks for taking the time to provide me with your feedback. First, there's those of you who love the display. You all thought that this should have been there since the beginning, or Tesla should at least offer this as an option. And then there are those of you who hated the display because of how it looks, it's circular, it's not rectangular. Uh, you hated that it blocks the minimalist view that the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y has um, and, and so on. And I respect that. So I have passed on all of your feedback to the manufacturer so that they can work on bettering this product in the future. And then there are those of you who requested a follow-up video and that is exactly what today is all about. So it is a packed video, let's get it started. Let's start off by talking about the software update. First, you know, some of you ask, will this device break with future Tesla software update? Uh, who knows, that is always a possibility. I've heard about different displays in the past, like a HUD display that totally stopped working after a Tesla software update. So that is always a possibility and you're always taking that risk that the display might not work with Tesla software update. But so far, I have had four Tesla software update with the display installed and it hasn't changed anything to the display. So I'm hopeful that manufacturer really thought about that and Tesla software update won't break the display. As far as the actual software update for this display, the, I reached out to the manufacturer and they sent me zip file in my email and when I downloaded the files there were two codes for one for the the right side and then one for the left side of the display because there are two USB-C ports on each side of the display we have to update both sides so it looks like it's kind of an individual uh, settings and software for for the two sides of this display so what I did was I took a USB flash drive um, which has a USB-C in it uh, they recommend using something called a U-Disk uh, I did not know such thing existed before they mentioned it but it worked with the USB-C for me uh, how what I did was I formatted the USB to FAT32 as they recommended it and then I just copied and pasted the code that they sent for right side and left side on this drive. Then I went to the display, I plugged it into the right side, I went to, down on the settings to where it says upgrade and then the software just started upgrading on just the right side of the wheel. Less than a minute later it just rebooted just this side and I did the same thing for the left side. So. I put in the flash drive, I went to the upgrade, and then it did the exact same thing, about a minute, and then it, it upgraded both sides. What changed? Uh, well, first, uh, what changed is now I can go between Model 3 and Model Y in the settings. That wasn't available before previously with the previous software update. So now I can change which model my car is. And this was, you know, the display was supposed to automatically recognize Model 3s and Model Ys, but some people had reported, uh, even in my comment section, that their uh, display wasn't recognizing their Model Y, it was still saying Model 3. So, manufacturer made a fix for this through the software update where now I can go between Model 3 and Model Y directly on the setting. Even I can change my car to Model Y, even though it's just Model 3, but it was supposed to automatically recognize that. Second, I saw they added a whole bunch of wheel options um, in the display. Now we can choose from, you know, anywhere from over turbine wheels to aero wheels to 19, 20 inch, all kinds of wheels that the Tesla offers. Uh, you can change those settings so that your car can be exactly 
what is shown on the display. So the, the software update process was fairly easy, even though it wasn't over the air software update like Tesla, uh, it was still pretty impressive that they were able to make that change and update. So it makes gives me hope that this device is not going to be obsolete in the near future and they will keep bettering the device using software updates in the in the future. And I hope they incorporate more stuff like navigation and more of what the car's main screen is showing to the display. Now, let me take you all on a ride and show you what the display looks like from the driver's seat. Right here, there is power. When I accelerate, it goes towards power. And when I let go of the acceleration, it goes towards charge, which is the indication of the regenerative braking here. Same like the screen that you see on the top in Tesla. Here is your speed limit, so 40 miles per hour, actually speed 25 miles per hour. Um, you see the battery miles, 180 mile here, percentage 76% uh, drive, and then your mileage, the odometer. I don't know what ready really means. Um, so that's basically it. While we're driving, of course, the, the turn signal, it appears right here. And if I'm gonna go right, it appears right here. When in low speeds, when I'm stopped, this, the, the kind of a top-down view of the car icon pops up. And when I'm making a turn, it, it turns with the car, like uh, what your Tesla screen does sometimes. So if you look at it while I'm turning, it's, it's showing the turn. But then as soon as the speed picks up, this display of the car pops up instead of the, the other one from top down. So I'm gonna put the car in autopilot. So well in autopilot, this is the sign that comes up right here. That means that the car's following distance is just one car. And if I change that, it does to two cars and so on. Now in my car over here, it has started giving me that warning uh, to put my hands on. And this is the, the gray kind of a black car steering wheel sign that comes up. So if I just ignore all of that, which it has rapid, now it is orange because I'm ignoring the, the sign that the, the autopilot warning uh, now is orange. And now is the third level, which is the red. And now it says the, the autopilot was gonna go away. And that is when I got that red sign when the car was starting to slow down. It's the evening time and Tesla's display has gone dark. Uh, but as you can see, this display is still a little bit brighter than the Tesla's display. Uh, I don't mind it, but for some folks that might be a problem. Um, they will probably want something similar, like very dark that the Tesla's display is in. And when I went to the settings, there is no place where I can change that brightness. So. That would be a good thing to put on the future software update for this display. So here's the footage of night driving. Um, the, my camera is picking up a decent amount of color. It's not as colorful and bright in real life, but it's still a little bit brighter than what most people would probably want. So there has to be that one setting where we can decrease the brightness of this display in the future software update. I have gotten used to not having anything in front of me uh, while driving on my Model 3. For the last two years, you know, I have always looked towards the right a little bit to see the speed, but especially during nighttime for the last couple of weeks, driving with this display has been amazing. I can see my speed right there in front of my eyes. And, you know, even though I have gotten used to, as I said, having this display definitely has helped me feel better about driving on this Model 3. So for that purpose alone, uh, this display has been definitely worth it. Somebody asked me how easy it is to change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour, and it's just as easy as just sliding this button up. And right there, it's kilometer per hour now instead of miles per hour. So that's pretty handy, and you can do this while you're driving. So you're crossing the Canadian border, and you want to change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour that is super easy can i still change the setting on the car now because this scroll wheel has been reserved 
for this display can I still use this scroll wheel yes uh, nothing really gets affected by this right scroll wheel because majority of the controls are drawn through the this scroll wheel on the left side of the steering wheel so your right side doesn't really control much other than the voice command of course which you know it still works with the display and one annoying thing is when you press uh, this steer the scroll wheel towards the right and bring up your menu you see that right here the following distance changes so your car's following distance changes so that is the only annoying thing about this is well every time you go into the setting you are changing your car's following distance and it saves to your profile so just be careful whatever following distance that you have here so let's go to quick controls if we do mirrors you see that this is all controlled by your left scroll wheel not your right scroll wheel and then as well as the steering wheel so that is also controlled by your left wheel even though right now is zero miles per hour I'm stopped and if I try to put it on the settings mode the device does not go into settings mode you saw that it updated the following distance here but the device does not go into the settings mode but as soon as I put it in park right here it's park now it goes into setting mode when I press it so it seems like when the car is in motion this device really becomes a read only so it is not affecting anything whatever you press here is not going to affect other than the fact that you can just swipe this up and down to change the display so going up it changes the display going down it does a different display so that's the only thing you can change another question that I get is I'm really tall how does this work uh, is this going to block the view of my display so for that what you got to do is go to your settings and just increase the height of this steering wheel to a little bit up so as you saw the display moves with the steering wheel so higher you move more visible it will be of course there is a comfortable position for you so it might not work perfectly but moving the display up does help uh, see the display more through the steering wheel. I don't know how to show you all exactly how this distance thing works, how tall you are. So I mounted my camera right here and all I can tell you is like the height is, so if we just do this, is between looks like eight and nine inches for the camera. And this is not going to be exactly right. Your eyes are going to be different than what my camera is seeing, but I'm going to put a video right here uh, of showing you what this display looks like from the camera. And then the distance here I have is, so it's mounted right here. So about 11 inches is where this camera has been mounted. And I've kind of tilted the camera to, to show you that it's looking down and the steering wheel is at the max height. So if, you measure yourself and if that is the comfortable height and you're okay with how this display looks then that is that is great it will work for you let me just quickly measure the distance from the seat here to right here so that is about 31 inches from the the seat to where the camera's lens is again the lens is going to be slightly different than your eyes so your eyes might see more uh, I'm 5'9 and I don't have any problems seeing the display. So <laughs> that is all I can do to show you. If you have any other ideas how I can demonstrate this better, let me know in the comment section below and I will include that in my next video about this display. The next common question that I get is about airflow. Is this going to block the great airflow that we have here? Uh, so I don't really know how to show you that through camera, but I think this test might work. So what we're going to do is, of course, because the display is right here, it does block the air because it's not directly coming, but there is some air dissipating from around and coming it to my face is still. So I still get the air and to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is, you ready for this? I have a cutout of Elon Musk <laughs> where, uh, we will measure how much air there is based on how much the stripes move while, the, while I'm blowing full air through the air conditioning. So 
to just start up, let's just first see how much air we get on this side, the passenger side, and then we'll compare that with the driver's side to show you uh, how much air you still get with this display. Here is the air on the passenger side. As you can see, there's a decent amount of air. The air blasting directly through the steering wheel, and you see that it is moving. And I put it down, there's still some air that's sipping through this display this is straight going into your face let me see closer to my face yeah there's still some air um, making it through there is still a space here where the air is flowing through and from here on top as well Another very common question that I received on that video is will this void my warranty? A lot of you ask that question and I'm not an expert by any means and I'm not a lawyer so I cannot provide you with legal advice. You should do this at your own risk. But when I look at the FTC's website it says that Tesla cannot void my warranty simply because I installed an aftermarket accessory like this one. They cannot void warranty just for that. But let's say if this part, this display or my installation or, you know, it, it accidentally shorts the computer and Tesla can prove that it was because I installed this display, then Tesla can void my warranty and make me pay for whatever the repair cost is for that specific part. Uh, it's not just going to void the warranty for the entire front dash. It will be for that specific part that it damaged because of this display. And that is about all I can tell you. That is how I inter I'm interpreting the FTC rules. I'll put a link down below so you can read on that rule directly from the FTC's website. Overall, the display has been great for the last couple of weeks. I have been driving, testing it. Uh, there is no vibration. The display doesn't shake. Um, I am actually getting used to having the display in front of me again. I don't know if that is a good or a bad thing, but I'm getting used to it. I was already used to not having the display, but now it feels nice to have, you know, speedometer right in front of my face. Uh, I also like that there are software updates, uh, even though not over the air fancy software update like Tesla, but there are some software updates. The build quality does not feel cheap. It is hard to show you through the camera of how this really feels and looks uh, in person, but it is not a cheap device. That is probably why it cost over $500 for this display because uh, it, is, it is not a cheap quality display. I think they do need to make some minor adjustments as soon as possible, such as being able to adjust the brightness setting because it might be too much of a glare at nighttime for some. They should also consider adding more display items from the actual main display to this little display here, such as navigation, lane lines, and more based on the feedbacks that I have been receiving in my videos. I thank you for your time. Please hit a like button for this video, subscribe, turn on the notification, please share my videos with friends and families who might have a Tesla and who might consider getting this display. Uh, also drop anything in the comment section below about you know future video requests if you have any questions or if you would like me to pass on any future updates request to the manufacturer. Ask me any questions about Tesla related content. I'm here to help you. I'm here to make your Tesla ownership experience better. So let me know any thoughts, any feedback about the video. Some of you guys have mentioned about some audio quality issues that you have in my previous video. So I have gotten a new mic. Hopefully that solves it. If not, let me know and I'll keep trying. Um, again, I want to grow. I want to take this channel to the next level and I can only do that with your continuous support. So please keep coming back for my videos. I'll see you soon in the next video. Namaste.